It's Britain's favourite weekly, with the inside track on the latest news, views, results and reactions to photos capturing the energy and drama of all the action. It's little wonder that Speedway's star is so eagerly anticipated by its thousands of loyal readers every week. Thanks to its unprecedented access to those in the sport and the passion, knowledge and expertise of its contributors, the star has become the essential weekly handbook to the sport. The man behind the rise of the star is Phil Rising. He joined the then owners and publishers in 1961 as a football reporter. In 1979, Phil became the editor of Speedway Star. He now owns and runs Pine Gen, the company behind the magazine you read every week. It started in 1953, so that's um, 54 years, coming out in 55, but it was in a very different format to what it is now, of course. Uh, Speedway was, as you probably know, was huge after the war, and uh, a company, I think it was originally called Echo Publication, started a Speedway magazine, a weekly Speedway magazine, and soon after started a soccer weekly as well. I was editor for 17 years now, but it's on a much more backseat role now. My main job really is just ensuring Pine Gym, which is the company that publishes Speedway Star, is uh, you know run properly and does everything we need to produce Speedway Star as we do. And I'm also now involved with the Grand Prix, so that takes up quite a lot of my time. But the day-to-day -day running of Speedway Star is left with uh, Richard Clark, really. My role in Speedway Star is um, basically getting it all together, putting it together over the weekends and uh, Monday and Tuesday, which are the two busiest days. Responsibilities are making sure that um, we meet all the deadlines, uh, that the magazine's full, that helps, no empty pages, and um, that uh, everything's accurate, subbed, um, the English is correct, and uh, everything like that, you know, match reports all add up. It's quite a task, it's, it's, you know, the match reports, people don't realise there's a lot of work goes into something like that, you know, because you've got about 30 odd matches a week, and each one of them you've got to go through, ride by ride, making sure his scores are accurate, heat by heat, then the teams, everything, so... There's a certain amount of pressure putting it together uh, on a weekly basis, but it, it's pressure you, you learn to deal with just like anything else. The pressure mostly comes on a, a Monday and Tuesday because most of Speedway uh, revolves around a weekend, particularly domestic stuff. So, um, again, compensations are either that Wednesday, Thursday and Friday are, are pretty quiet and laid back, other than if you're going out to Grand Prix weekends, something like that. The prime role of Speedway Star is to, is to provide a news service for the people who go to Speedway. I mean, the, you know, the, the general coverage of Speedway and newspapers is not that good. So if people want to get the result of Somerset versus Plymouth, they really need to buy Speedway Star. So that's our core market, really. The Grand Prix coverage is the icing on the cake, I think, as far as we're concerned. We like to do it. I think the, the people who buy the magazine like to read that as well. So it's a little bit of a bonus for them. We always do extra pages before and after Grand Prix weekends, and we try and give it the, the best coverage we can. I think the fans appreciate that. But at the same time, if we didn't provide that basic Conference League result service as well, they'd be up in arms. I think Speedway Star is looked upon as uh, it's the place where it's all gathered together. And, and it's interesting because I can't think of that many sports where even the participants do tend to keep an eye on what's going on in those pages. That's quite unusual. You, know, you don't see, um, say, footballers, you know, wandering around with copies of 422 or whatever under their arms. When you turn up at Grand Prix, you know, nearly all the riders say, "Oh, have you got this week's Speedway Star with you?" You know, because they want to sort of go back and kick back in the hotel room or the motor and read it. So that's nice. Essential to the unique content of the magazine is Clarkey's incisive and balanced reporting, thanks to his great rapport with the riders and teams. Dealing with the riders is, is fantastic. They're great. Um, they're always approachable. As long as you pick the right times, of course, but they'll give you all the time you need. During the off-season, you, you can go and visit them and, you know, sit around in their kitchen, crack open a couple of beers and, and chat for three hours, you know. I mean, try doing that with a Formula One driver or a professional footballer, no chance. So I think there's a, a mutual respect between us uh, and them. We have total respect for what they do and, as I say, try to approach them when the time is right uh, and, you know, give them... The their time when, you know, if it's Nicky wanting to smash a pit telephone up, let him get on with it and see him like 10 minutes later when he's gone down, that's, that's not a problem. 
Clarkey's not only responsible for the weekly editorial, he can also be found at the track on weekends, working on those revealing behind-the-scenes features. Well, when I go to a Grand Prix to report, sometimes you'll use the practice day to pick up more feature-like material as opposed to hard news. And uh, again, the, the riders are, are so helpful that once they've sort of uh, done and dusted, they're sort of sitting back, they're quite happy to give you an hour if, if you've got an idea that you want to sort of kick around with them for something for the, the following week or whatever. On the day of the meeting, the main two things you have to worry about are obviously uh, getting getting the report and, and getting everything accurate and, and down. And then one of the hard parts can be that you, you attend the press conference where they nearly always have the top three. And that's great, but of course one of the main stories could well be one of the favourites crashing out and you, you keep thinking in the back of your mind, he's going to get in his van and drive off, you know, and I'm going to miss him completely, now what do I do? So you're sort of running between two places, which can be a bit difficult. Production techniques have changed dramatically over the years. Today, your Speedway star is produced using the same advanced technology used by all the leading daily newspapers and magazines. It's a lot easier now, to be perfectly honest. The digital age has just revolutionised I mean, everything, you know, from TV and, and particularly magazine production. We, our schedule used to be much tighter 10 years ago than it is now. We used to have to have a film with the printers on a Monday afternoon, another section on Tuesday, and wait for all the printing processes. Now, with just sending pages over a telephone line, um, and it could can be anywhere, you know, the, the, the process is the same as whether it's Speedway Star or Grand Prix program that goes to Denmark. As far as we're concerned here, it's the same place. There's no discernible difference anymore. Um, there's no scanning of pictures anymore. Everything comes straight off a digital camera. There's no setting of copy. Everything is, is computerised or comes in on email. So uh, I joke with the boys, it was much harder when I was editing and producing magazines than it, than it is now. Having said that, it enables you to do a lot more quicker and turnaround times are much faster now. We don't actually go to press down until 5 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon and the magazines are picked up by TNT at 5 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, hopefully in every shop in the country that, that sells them on a Thursday morning. All the subscription copies go out Wednesday and the people get them Thursday. So it's magazine production as such is, is a lot easier now thanks to the digital age. During the season, we average around 20,000. We do about 12,000 through the shops. We do nearly 6,000 through subscriptions now, and then we do about 3,000 in track sales. And during the winter, we lose the track sales, obviously, and we lose a few of the, the wholesale, so we probably drop down about 16,000 a week during the winter. Responsible for distribution, subscriptions, and advertising is Dave Fairbrother. During the week, he ensures the results of the team's work gets to you, the reader, on time and at the right address. Like the rest of the team on the magazine, Dave spends his weekends at the Grand Prix, working for the series owners of BSI Speedway, and occasionally finding time to pick up a shot for the magazine itself. My role during the Grand Prix are to take pictures for Speedway Star and for BSI. It's quite nice because I get quite a good free roll going most places to take pictures, which is really exciting. On Friday when we go to the Grand Prix and take the pictures, myself and Mike Patrick would then go back to the hotel and work on the, the pictures that we've taken on practice. Uh, we'd you know, correct them up, name them, dump away the ones that we don't want. And then when we go on Saturday to the Grand Prix itself, we would take another 2,000 pictures and then do the same Saturday night when we finished. And then on Sunday morning when we're flying back, we work on the pictures. Um, and we have to have them ready by 8 o'clock on Monday morning for the boys to, to work on and suppose we take about 3,000 pictures, 3,500 pictures on the Grand Prix weekend. When you put Speedway and photography into the same sentence, the conversation usually comes around to one person, Mike Patrick. 37 years as a Speedway photographer and after millions of pictures, Mike is regarded as one of the world's leading Speedway photographers. Well, Mike is obviously, you know, our number one photographer and, and he is an exceptional photographer. He, he, he loves Speedway, I think that's the first thing, that's his passion. If you ask him to take photographs of virtually anything else, he's just not interested. He's a perfectionist, and, and what he now enjoyed, because he used to work in the darkroom, as a darkroom technician, so he's always known what goes into to making a, a picture, not just with the camera, but the after part as well. And what I think he really enjoys now is, is the digital cameras that we now use, the Canon uh, models we've now got, I think can take 12 pictures a second, of a speedway race. 
but Mike can now work on them with Photoshop and, and, and spend time, and he loves doing that, to get the, you know, the absolute colours right and everything else. So he's enjoying that side of it much more. OK, and again, another nice place to buy us. Good pose, Mike. Lovely. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's it. Keep buying. He is an exceptional photographer, and I don't think there's anyone in the sport who wouldn't say that, that, that he is by far and away the best. Having said that, that also, the equipment they now use means that, that we get pictures from just about every track in the country that are of a good quality, whereas before, unless they really came from Mike or one or two other people, they were almost unusable. Mike's pictures have graced the front pages of Speedway Star since 1972. Ask anyone at the magazine and they'll all agree. The standard of his work make the design and layout so much easier. The man with the enviable job of working with such quality photographs is Mick Smith. My role at Pint Inn um, is on the production, um, making up the pages, uh, doing the layouts. We take the copy that the editorial boys do. Um, they give us X amount of pages to work with, um, doing the colour correction on the pictures, um, doing cutouts, just doing the design basically for the pages. The Grand Prix, we really enjoy the lads that have been away covering the Grand Prix when we come back or on a Monday. Um, obviously we have probably 16 extra pages, so there's an awful lot to turn around, all the pictures have come over to sort out. Uh, there's three of us on production. Uh, we designate one person to do the Grand Prix pages as allowed for, um, and then the other lads carry on doing the production on the rest of the magazine. Well, it's been start with a weekly magazine. Sometimes trying to do layouts can be fairly difficult, although if you've got some very good pictures, it makes life a lot easier. We try to get an action shot in, sometimes we get some fantastic portraits of the riders, we try and use those. But it can, in the season when we're limited to space, it can be difficult sometimes to make the pages really have some oomph to them. And we use a software called Park Express to make up the pages, and you can set up style sheets. So we use styles for uh, fonts, service fonts and typefaces for headings, again for the body copy, for feature pages. Um, and we do try to vary it. But they keep it within a sort of a set style so that the magazine has got a recognised style. In the vaults of Speedway Star lie the results of thousands of hours of dedication bringing this much loved sport to a passionate audience every single week. Choosing a favourite edition isn't easy. I think the thing that I'm most proud of now is, is for the past three years, at uh, the start of the British Speedway season, we've produced. Uh, a preview edition of the, of the domestic season and the Grand Prix season. The last two have been 128 pages. There's nothing that anyone could possibly want that isn't in there. And I think given the, uh, the staff and the turnaround time in which it's done, it's, it's a phenomenal operation, something that we're very proud of. Phil and Richard have been reporting on the Speedway Grand Prix series in Speedway Star for many years, since it began back in 1995. So how do they feel the series has moved on in that time? My main background probably in journalism is soccer and one of the things I was always wary of was that how much Speedway was the poor relation. Well, it's not anymore. The, the British Grand Prix at Cardiff is as good an event, if, if not better in terms of an event, than the FA Cup final, the World Cup finals in soccer, the European Cup finals, have covered all those in journalism. And quite frankly, they don't compare to the Speedway events but for the whole weekend. And I think that, that's, being part of that's fun. The Grand Prix series has gone from strength to strength. It, it's fantastic the way it's evolved and, and the riders have given so much to it. I think that sometimes gets overlooked. Their commitment to it is, is unbelievable. I mean, those first corners, I don't, I don't think Speedway people sometimes really appreciate what they're seeing. You know, that, that is the fiercest Speedway ever in, in the sport's history.